This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, welcome back to Author You, your guide to book publishing. It is hard for me to believe that we have already completed one month in this new year. And that this is, I guess, the older we get, the faster it goes. I mean, it seems to be happening. But the reality is that uh, in, at the end of last year, I did a, an open kind of pick my brain webinar. And it was amazing because the, and it was an open mic, questions you can just ask me, just bang, bang, bang. And over the hour, and it ended up going an hour and a half. Over 100 questions were filled in, a variety of questions. So I thought it would be kind of appropriate to, let's just revisit what will make you truly successful for 2017. If it, is it um, uh, uh, creating the book finally? Is it going back and fixing the one that you created, but mm, it's kind of limped along? How can, how can you uh, revamp it, renew it, goose it up? Um, is it really starting something new, maybe doing a redirect? Is it a deal that you really do kind of have a, a whole body of work, whether it's in articles, whether it's in blogs, whether it's in other books, whether it's just ebooks, whatever it is, how can you do the repurposing to fancy yourself up to put it together that you can really come forward with a product line. Have you thought about, especially for those of you who are nonfiction authors, have you thought about creating a training program? Something else I did is I took some of the best webinars I had done throughout the year, and I did a marathon derby on one week, and I put them all up for free. People could just milk them and go through them and, and look them over. So this is this is really a good time that I know you're going to see information starting to come down the pike to pull you away where people are starting about gulp taxes. But I don't want you to start about get get into all of that. I'm not going to have you worry about the tax line that you have to deal with in April. Um, what I really want you to do is think about okay, what can I do to revamp and redo yourself? And I can tell you, for me, one of the big things that I really wanted to get on was to turn so many of the programs that I have done um, in in the webinars and slides over the years and things and really turning it into a bona fide training program. And how I finally saw it all come together was from a webinar that I hosted um, and using a tool like Jing, J-I-N-G. What I liked about Jing is, one, it was free. Number two that it would allow you, in the free version anyway, you can, uh, you can have a dialogue interaction, a video interaction with your viewers uh, for up to five minutes. Well, you know, the way people look at things and they learn in these little mini modules. Now, when you couple that with going through the slides, creating PowerPoint slides or ones that you have, you can really dialogue and talk about it and really turn it into a chapter by chapter by chapter. So that was a fabulous tool to discover. And it was really kind of the aha that I saw that I could really bring that into play. So with that said, let's get into some of the things that really starts with what your author success is all about today. And I'm going to start with a bunch of D's. Um, and that starts with the whole issue of a declutter, de- de- declutter with all caps almost. Now, those of you who know me, or I may have mentioned it in previous um, programs, that in the last quarter of last year, I did a huge transition. 
And not only did I sell my home of 20 years, but it, I know we also moved our offices. It forced a declutter. Now, yep, we purged. We threw stuff away. But we didn't move into either the office or our personal home um, into a much smaller place. But what we did is we did some shifting around of things and different layouts and things. So, and we took into consideration environment. We took into consideration visual, which is really critical for me. There are certain things that comfort things almost that I have to have around uh, to bring me into play. And I suspect that you may have some things It could, you know, it could be a stone you like to pick up and play with for heaven's sakes. So you don't want that to disappear. Although someone would come along saying uh, you get an efficiency expert in saying, you don't need this stuff. Yes, you do. So you, you've got to claim what you really need. Um, for me that if they walked in to my office, inner office I have an outer office where I meet with clients on a big conference table and we have a whiteboard and all those things but I have my own inner office where I come in and I have a a, a couple of comfortable chairs I have a fireplace that I can cozy down in and be quiet I also have a desk and and all that but I have certain paraphernalia I have to have around to visually see when I'm working on something I have paper out I've got my research out I I'm not glued to doing everything internally on my computer. I bring it together and then drop it in. But I have things that have to be out. If I had one of these uh, cleanup efficiency experts coming in, they would immediately want to dump everything. Well, that's not going to work for me. Understand when you're doing a declutter doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have everything squeaky clean. It doesn't mean that you're going to have your desktop pristine. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to have things off the floor. Decluttering means getting rid of stuff. When I'm in the writing mode, when I'm moving forward, when I'm doing planning, decluttering means getting rid of stuff that will become distractors, putting it away, getting it out of sight on that. So, Whatever you're doing in your space, what you need to do is get order into it for you, not necessarily for your friend or someone who is a time management. It's getting order for you to move forward. And then when you're done with it, move it out of the way, because that's when it does start cluttering up. If you don't deal with it, you'll get chaos out of your life. The next thing to do is to really start looking at this whole thing that I like to call is, is kind of the rejuvenate yourself. So what is it that will um, uh, bring life back to something? And we can tie it in with really kind of my next point, which is the whole thing of repurposing. But what can you do to, let's talk about just rejuvenating um, your own personal work. And this is where you need to do become a in uh, a competitive spy. What's going on in your genre? What's going on in your field? What's going on with other people working around and doing stuff stuff that you're not tuned into? Um, and maybe you've been so wrapped up in your own world that um, you you don't even think about it. But the reality is, there's a lot going on in almost every environment, every field out there. So when you're doing a rejuvenate, I want you to put on your competitive uh, spy hat. And I want you to really look, do a search. So what were the top books in your genre? What are the top blogs in your field of expertise? And I don't care if you're talking fiction or nonfiction, that what are the top ones when you're going to are you, follow them? Just, just study what the commentary is. Look what the leader of the gang is writing about. You know, do you agree or disagree? Now, it might, you might give you material that you can pull out that you can take it and run with. But what you want to do is really look at uh, what it is that they're doing and others are doing and maybe you're out in left field. Do you need to come in, catch a ball and come in a little bit? And work that through. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. And you start this rejuvenation deal. Now, we're in the heart of wintertime right now as we run this for the first time. 
and that who knows what kind of blizzards are going to come in. I live in Colorado. We get blizzards. Uh, you may be in a part of the country or the world that that's just not an issue. Maybe you have other weather-related concerns. But that that there are times to hunker down and look at what you can do to revitalize, to regoose, to really bring those things out that will make a huge difference. So this is the time to do it. I was standing out on my back deck and I'm looking out and we're supposed to have, um, uh, we, we've had a couple of snowstorms coming in. The mountains seem to be doing okay. But down here in the flatlands, or what we call the front range, it's no big deal right now. But I have noticed because we've had not so bad weather that already greening is starting and that's it's too early. So what I'm talking about here is, and I'm someone who has actually been ahead of the curve of changes and I've seen things and, and when, when you do that, don't shy away. Don't be afraid to put your neck out, to put your words out, to put your thoughts out, to take a position um, because it, it does come around and it allows you then to label the title, which I think is wonderful, is that you are the pioneer um, that back in 1981, when I came out with my very first book called The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy, I was the, what, the first book that was written for exclusively for women on dealing with money management. Now, I can tell you that companies didn't know what to do with me. I was working with a major brokerage firm at the time. They really didn't know what to do with me because I was ahead of the curve. I was breaking breaking the deal. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what you want to do is don't be afraid. You get, label it as pioneer. Again, in 1987, when I came out with my book on women betraying and undermining women, it was the first one. I was the pioneer and looking at ethics and women in sabotage in the workplace. All right, so what I'm talking about is looking where you are, doing your competitive edge, bringing that about, um, and really figuring out who you are. What do you want to do? What have you done in the past that you can take forward with a whole new image, look, presentation, twist, hook? That's where rejuvenation comes in. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. We're talking about your author success for 2017 and beyond. I'm Judith Browse. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author You today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author You on Twitter at Author You and on Facebook at Author You, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author You, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story, and it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for 
Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evy Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so we've talked about decluttering, getting things out of your space that will take you away from what your purpose is here getting juiced up, rejuvenated, and then the whole thing of repurposing, which I think is so important to look at. I mean, you don't have to always have something original, brand spanking new, never have been thought about before. Repurposing allows you to go back to your work, your thoughts, it is even as raw as some of those were. And bring them about again, to uh, reposition them, to reshape them, to lead in. I mean, you could go back, and I have certainly done this, and I know every blogger out there who has an ongoing blog will do it. They'll go back and look at their blogs that are a year, two years, three years old, and they will look, how can I redo this? How can I bring this about? How can I tie it in? with maybe a topical story that's going on. Um, how can I maybe, uh, and, and we've used the, the word many, 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 many times, news jacket. So there's always news going on. I mean, we can't get away from it. And whether it's news, news, or sometimes real, unreal news, um, what can you do with a break, a true breaking news story that could tie in and show that your expertise is needed. And and one of the things to remember, and I know last month we did a show talking about um, tw- Twitter. I've, I've done this several times. And Twitter is the place the media goes. It's where they, that's where the trolls, the, the reporter trolls are. And so what are you doing there? And what kind of hashtags? are you using that you could maybe bring it up? And I'm going to encourage you on your repurposing to now um, in your, when you write a headline and you're going to put it out, I want you to use a hashtag within it on a keyword that will tie it in, that will bring a little bit more attention to what you're doing. Because if there is anything that ties in with the breaking news arena, you want to really take advantage of that. And then, in, in the repurpose that you could, whether it's a book 
I mean, I, I've had authors taken major books and all of a sudden realizing, you know, I could have broken this baby up. Or there is a key chapter within the book. And I know uh, before we ever started using this word, I had a book called Stop Stabbing Yourself in the Back. And um, that was just that dealt with self-sabotage. That came and it did very well. People would come along on my book table when I was conferences and they would point to the cover and says, I do this all the time. And they buy the book. Um, that book came from a chapter in a book that was originally called Gender Traps. And it was based on a survey that I had had, had 5,000 individuals in the survey. And in the survey, I just asked this simple question, you know, what are the top three issues and problems that you're encountering in your workplace today? And it was an open-ended question. And answers came in from all over Timbuktu. And that with that, I mean, I had already written about sabotage in the workplace, that I'd already written about miscommunications and those kind of things. And you can always write around communication snafus because they're usually at the core of all conflicts. I was already a known expert in conflict resolution, especially in the healthcare workplace. But that little one, number nine, was forget about people shafted. I mean, forget about being undermined by a coworker or a manager. It's what I do to myself. And it just stuck to me. And I always knew that is a book all by itself. And it eventually, a couple of years back, I came and pulled that, the, all the stories I had with that, and I could write an entire book around it and break it up and then pull some of my other material um, dealing with confidence because that's going to be one of the issues of why we undermine lack of it. Uh, we undermine ourselves. So I And I had written several books on confidence and I could go back and repurpose a little bit. So what I'm saying here is you don't have to do some things brand spanking new. It's probably sitting right now on your laptop. It's sitting in a file you've tucked away that you can pull it out and bring it about. So what can you repurpose, rejuvenate to bring out with a new look, a new feel, a new story, a new presentation? And you could create maybe a mini book. Or you could create a series of blogs, or maybe you could turn it into a training program. All right. So repurposing. And then the, the other step that I think is really import, important before we get into the whole game plans of how I look at things is to revisit some of your old stuff. Now, I keep I just keep when I have ideas floating around, I actually have an expandable file, paper file that I just drop them into. Um, and I will once in a while just sit down with a cup of tea and just pull them out and look at it. Is this still relevant? Is merit? Do I still have any interest in playing with this? Am I, is there any passion there? If I don't, I get rid of it. It, it goes into clutter pile and gone. But if it does, I might be able to revisit because, you know, sometimes when you do this, that kind of a revisit of things that maybe you were interested in five years ago, um, there's a kindling and going back can take you forward possibly to your future. So that's all I'm suggesting here. And then the last thing I think that's really important to, to recognize is that you've got to do some recentering and that and and I can tell you for women, we don't do as great a job, I think, as the men. And I know some people think, What? What do you mean? That women are more inclined to put themselves at the bottom of the list. They gotta take care of whether it's the kids, the house, the cars, the pets that they kind of we all still do that as the priority over ourselves um, and maybe what you need to do is my priority is I need to get down and exercise for 20 minutes or I just need to go for a walk or I need to just spend some time for friends because that rejuvenates me or I maybe I just need a half hour all by myself without anybody coming in I mean I, what I'm saying is Make time for yourself, whatever is your thing. And I'm going to tell you, you'll be healthier. You'll be happier. You'll be allowed to refocus your vision. And I think that you, you start guiding it with your overall passion. Now, with all that said, let's go through some of the rules of what's going on for today mm -hmm. in publishing uh, where you are at. 
and the the value of of mm-hmm. all those things and and so when you when you have that um Let's just look at last the year before last, because I can't tell you the final numbers for 216. But I can tell you in 2015, over 3.4 million books were published. Now, that's from all areas. That's from indie publishers, self-publishers, traditional publishers. It's from mm-hmm. academic publishers. It's from um, the ebook. It's from every, everything. Now, should a lot of those books have been published? Probably not. Probably not. Um, but there is a lot of books out there. Will we probably have uh, 3 million books published in 216? I think so, if you look at all the resources. But let's talk Mm -hmm. about some of the new rules today. Now, most rules, the new rule number one, most books are not sold in bookstores. Most books are not sold in bookstores. Over 70% are sold uh, on on an online bookstore called Amazon. But the traditional brick-and-mortar stores, the answer is they're not. Now, I will say this, though. Both library sales are increasing, so you, you don't want to ignore them in your mix. And independent bookstores are on the growth. More niche bookstores are on the growth. And interesting, we're seeing authors opening up little bookstores. So one of the things that rules for today is that I think you all need to know about um, uh, IndieBound, I-N-D-I-E, bound.org. And on your personal websites where you have either a store or order my book or whatever the tab says, that you, they can order it from you. And let's say you have it, you sell it directly through PayPal that way and, and you sell it as get a customized personal copy directly from me and they can do it that way and you can handle it. And then I would have a link to Amazon and or Barnes and Noble. I I would not ignore Amazon, but Amazon and you could include a Barnes and Noble link where they could buy the book online. And then secondly, you could have a, I, I would have a little verbiage and I would have the, and I would put the logos, by the way, use the logos of all these kind of things. And so I would have PayPal with a customized and I would a customized logo. You can go to Canva and create kind of a nice little logo, C-A-N-V-A, or you could go to one of my favorite sites, Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com, where they have lots and lots of Free photos, the first line, they will always be for sale. The first line of photos they show when you put in whatever keyword you're looking for. But everything under that, free, 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 free. And you can use to your heart's content. I love Pixabay. I would have the uh, uh, Amazon logo and click over there. I would have the Barnes & No logo and I would have the IndieBound.org logo. Now, I would add a little description and just say, if you love independent bookstores like I do and want to support them, I encourage you to contact your local independent bookstore. All you need to do is put in your zip code and then click and a list of independent bookstores in your area will pop up and you can order my book from them. What do I love about independent bookstores? They have no problem dealing in most cases. There's always exceptions, of course. They have no problem in dealing directly with an independent small press like you. So you want to make sure that you do that. All right, we're going to come back with more rules for today. I've got a lot more, and then I want to get into some game plans, which are really important for you to understand as you go forward. This is Judith Bryles. I'm your book shepherd, and it's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. 
If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, continuing with rules for today that don't underestimate the power, and I'm talking power, of niche outlets, museums, galleries, stores. If, if you have a, have a book that uh, would fit into a Lowell's or a Home Depot environment because, you know, I go in there and I see a few things. Um, I see things in FedEx stores, books all the time going into those. I see books in, in gift shops, in hospitals, in uh, museums, and, th- and understand there are a gazillion types of museums uh, where that you might be a fit. And I've known many, many authors who have been extraordinarily successful in not only getting their books into museums, but they do events with museums. And, of course, museums, here's what's hot about them. Um, and these places, they have emailing lists of their patrons or uh, visitors or guests, whatever they want to call them. And they have those that, that they will include them in mailings if you are doing a special event. How cool is that? And instead of doing, and by the way, the typical books signing in a book store sells six books. Typical. They're not huge. That's why you have to drive people uh, to be there. But they're not huge. So what do you do? Um, and that if you can go in to a niche place where, let's say, you have a book about whether it's World War II or... Or it could it be about aviation or anything like that? It, those kind of museums are all over the United States, all over the United States. In many countries, they have special museums. If you have a, a book about uh, whether it could, it, maybe it's um, anything about the ocean or water. Think about aquariums, about fish life. Anything like that, that's another area. What about zoos of going into there? Do you have things that might fit into that and you can do a special event? Heck, you might want to do a book launch at your local zoo if you have a book about critters. Um, and Or there's you know bigger museums where it's environmental or history or you know maybe there's a special uh, a display going on that you can tap into. So that's where you need to think a little bit differently. And if you have a successful event, you drive people with there. I'm telling you, those people talk to other people what works, and you can ask for referrals. So take advantage of that. Now, ebooks are less than 30% of all book sales. Now, do, are there a lot of ebooks sold? Yes, there are. But they're less than 30% of all total book sales. Print books are still the dominating factor. 
And in, and one of the great things is there are far more readers now than there were just a year ago, really thanks to ebooks. And we're seeing ebook people actually transitioning back to more print reading. Um, and that what we've seen in the stats that come from the Book Industry Study Group, BISG, that that print books are really enjoying healthy sales and, in fact, increases, increases in sales in basically all categories. New rules today. Hardcovers are no longer the standard for serious books. It used to be if your book was serious, you had to have it in hardcover case bound. Um, uh, and that's just not the case anymore. And there's a myth out there that only libraries want hardback books. Taint true. Taint true. That the new rule is book sizes are smaller. You, you, you know, certainly kids books, you still see eight by 10, eight by 10 and a half, eight by 11, eight and a half by 11 type formats, uh, that you still see some six by nines that used to be the standard five years ago. They, they are not now, but you still do see them with some of the big books, uh, that the major traditional publishers will come out with that, um, uh, with their, some of their fiction lines and some of their really meaty biographies. But the reality is you're seeing it drop down a half inch on each side, five and a half by eight and a half, five and a quarter by eight, five and a quarter by eight and a half. You're seeing those kind of sizes, five by eight in play. Um, and if you have a book that is intimate or poetry, things like that, that smaller size always makes sense that people can tuck in and take away. There are a few uh, print-on-demand books uh, in the bookstores, and but if you're going to do if if you're going to do solely a print-on-demand book, you've got to make sure that you're posted with Ingram Spark. Why? And you say we'll say, but I wanted to do Amazon's Create Space. That fine, do that one too, but don't mark on Amazon global or worldwide distribution. Do not do that. You do that on Ingram. Ingram is the largest distributor in the world. They are well respected, um, and bookstores like Ingram over Amazon, and they will order from that. So keep that in mind. Now, continuation here that reviews are still critical. They are still key. Uh, then, and Amazon relies on them. Here's what you want to start doing. Here's your your internal review is that not only do you ask people to do a review on Amazon, they need to also do it on Goodreads. Yes, I know that Amazon owns Goodreads, but you want to do that and that they don't talk. There's not a bridge, at least not yet. Now, you're going to need to go up on Goodreads and create a page for your book so it can land there and that you mm -hmm. can literally do a copy-paste over and you want to make sure that you everywhere you go, this is a rule that you carry a clipboard, uh, put, a, put a little like up there, your picture, your name, your book cover on it and collect people's names, emails, phone numbers in some case and put them and put at the top of it saying that they will be added to your pri, uh, priority or something like that email list. And when they sign that up, they are now giving permission to add their name into your ongoing uh, chain, your channels of what you send out. And you, that's just something that you really absolutely want to do. Um, new rule is that if, if you really are trying to get the attention of libraries, um, that they want to see some major reviews. So if your book's already out, I'm going to suggest you all send it to uh, go to Midwest Book Reviews uh, and send it mm -hmm. in there so that you can uh, get a post review. And, and you're just you're going to have to go through. You, you might want to consider paying for a Clarion review with, from Forward Reviews, well respected with libraries, and get those posted up. Blue Ink Reviews is another one that those are all respected post-publication. Pre-publication, you can reach out for Forward, which has a non-paid, they, you know, they have thousands submitting and they do a quarterly magazine to get it out with. So you want to, or every, every, every month magazine. So you want to get that out with. And that you want to get uh, just really 
then taking copy and slapping those on your Amazon page, your Goodreads page, so they can see them and come back to that. So that is a critical thing for you to do uh, in all that. Now, what you've got to do is also that forget some of the things, what you know, uh, that newspapers and reviewers uh, will review paper re- books at, and that they, they'll take PDF books. Sometimes they'll take ebooks. You have to find out what they want. Uh, reviewers and bloggers will review print-on-demand books. And then there was a belief that they wouldn't. Of course they will. Bookstores will stock print-on-demand books, but they have to look not like print-on-demand. So that means the cover needs to be, has some professional ink to it. It's, it's, it's got to have um, some kind of a decent layout to it. And it needs to be sure that when they open it up and read that first chapter or read the first couple page, there aren't mistakes on it, right? So they will stock them and they're going to look for those things. And here's an aha. Don't expect your friends or your relatives to buy your book. Should they? Yes, they should. Yes, they should. Just don't be disappointed because most will not. They may give you lip service. And then um, that that libraries, if, if you've got it, here's something. Let's say you've done a picture book or a coffee table book, and you think this would be perfect in the libraries. You know, if it's got an expensive price tag on it, they're not going to buy it if you're unknown, if you don't have a reputation out there, if you haven't done something. So be tuned into that. And that you also have to understand uh, that books don't sell themselves that you are going to have to get behind it and do the push to make that happen. So this all starts with how do you how do you put this together? And we'll spend our last segment talking about some of the game plans that, you know, who needs you need to ask these questions. Who needs or wants your book? Why will they buy it? How do they find new books when they're shopping for books? What are they where are they going for it? What formats do they want? Do they want E? Do they want audio? Do they want print? Uh, so those are things do they, that, that come out. And then you need to understand what your competition is about. And that you will find out that, that you're doing that is that you need to know what kind of other books do your readers read? Uh, where do they get them? Where do they find them? How do they go about buying them? What kind of formats do they want them in? Um, and that it would be nice to know if you can figure out how many books are they really selling your competition does. And last but not least, what, what, why is yours different? What makes yours different? What makes it unique? What makes it better? Now, here's one of the little tricks I always recommend. Go to Amazon, go to the one, 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 two star reviews, and you can see what the book is lacking, lacking. Then you need to know what kind of pricing, what kind of size of the book, how many pages, what do the interiors look like? I love to see kind of customization on the interior. All right, with that said, we'll be right back. We're going to talk about then the game plans and get into and some of the things that you need to do. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Browse, and I'm your book shepherd all throughout this session today. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. 
Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303 885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book... If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so now as we we come in on our little final segment here, I want to talk about, first of all, the whole area of, you know, you know, what are you in your marketing that you do that you have here on your uh, that you're you're really thinking about in this that that if you can look at your competition, you know, how are they marketing? Because if it's working and they're moving books that if you can mimic what they're doing, that is what they're doing. And I think that you also have to have a come to book meeting with yourself and really decide how much time am I going to spend in marketing? Because that I've said this often, I know you. If you're a regular listener, you've heard me say it. That as soon as you finish your book, you have to change from the CWO, the Chief Writing Officer, and transition to the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer. You have a product to move. What are you going to do to put your time and energy in to doing a push out to make that happen? How much time will you commit to that? Um, in that area and, and and are you going to do it yourself or are you going to get some help um, so what you need to learn in this whole transition of your author's success is that if you're going toward bookstores you know are they right for for you for your book and if if they that they are the right wrong fit because you've got to understand bookshelves are very expensive real estate very expensive real estate And if you don't have a game plan to support the bookstore that you're trying to get them into, to drive traffic to them, they're not going to want your book. They want to believe that you do. And you've got to do that. All right. And then you also, if you're looking at a bookstore, you want to really look at the issue of I would get yourself down to a brick and mortar, see how many books they have on in competition to yours. And again, what makes yours different and why should it sell? And maybe just talking to one of their book buyers in the store and get some really good feedback. What you need to do is you need to create a plan for how you're going to create demand for you and your book. You've got to be really honest about what you're willing and ready to do. And you've got to really look at your time. What kind of time commitment as well as gulp financial commitment here. So when I talk about game plans, 
and I created one for the author success game plan model. And I'm just going to kind of go through the elements of it. And the first really starts with, um, and my game plans, when I do these in workshops, they're, I mean, they're, you know, they're two feet by three feet. And I have people put, stick them on the walls and I give them all sticky notes. And we go to town writing all over the place in the positioning. Um, what I like about using sticky notes when I'm doing my game planning is their, one, their portability and their stickiness that I can move them around and rethink about them or discard them, all right? So that you talk about success and that what is success to you? And that that's really one of the first things that you've really got to determine. What is it in your success arena? What is it? Is it money? Is it fame? fortune? Is it having reporters call? Is it uh, building your expertise and being recognized as a go-to? Is it having the media knock down on your door and your phone ringing off the hook? What is it? Determine that. And then the next part of that is, okay, how are you going to measure it? How are you going to measure it? And money is money. Um, Is it so many media hits? Is it winning book awards? I mean, what is it? How are you going to measure it? And then what you need to do is create those stepping stones to go from, okay, here's how I've identified it, to what steps do I need to take one by one, one by one, to get to that final, I made it, I did it, I have it, goal. So what are they? And everyone's going to be different. The next thing that's really imperative, and I drill it into all my clients I work with personally, is to really know specifically who your market is. It is not everybody. Never is it everybody. Who is it? And I've always said, the more you niche yourself, the bigger your market become. That it's much easier to be the whale in a pond versus a sardine in the sea. So who is your market? Is it a he or a she? Or maybe it, it it doesn't matter there. Are they old or young or in between? Uh, what What's the age? What, what kind of habits do they have? That uh, What kind of work do they do? What do they like to play with? What, what might their hobbies be? What kind of maybe screw-ups have they had? What kind of successes in their own right could they have? Those are just some of the questions you need to ask in developing who my market is. Think about going to see a movie. When a movie opens up and screen and you've you've got action going on or there's some kind of character development, in the visual, you see a lot about it. You'll see a male or female or you could see a mixed group. But there's going to be some scene unfolding and it will tell you a lot. That's what you need to develop, that kind of Bible for who your reader is. Okay, where do they hang out? Where do they hang out? And then what you want to do is get into, first of all, what is their pain? All of them have pain. It's much easier on the nonfiction side to look for the pain because these people who read nonfiction are looking for answers, solutions to whatever it is they're reading about. On that. Um, And it it could be, and and, and the the pain, their pain is, I want more information. I want more information. I need need more information. That's why I'm reading this, you know, heavy duty biography on Ben Franklin, what made him tick. I want more information. And then I want to learn about some of the things that he did in his methodologies and maybe his negotiations and some of the problems and mistakes he ran into. Um, So biographies open it that way. But understand that all readers have some kind of pain and looking for information. Fiction people are often just looking for escapism. My pain is I need to do a dropout for a few hours. I need a really great read. So the pain goes in with the reader's needs. Then this is where a lot of stopping gets hit. um, And that we did, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be doing it ongoing, but I I know coming up um, on this coming weekend in the Author You community, we're going to be doing a heavy-duty program on what's changes and where we need to go in social media, which is huge. 
So social media in that area. So what is the social media um, that you've got that you need to really be rocking and rolling on? And I think that one of the problems this is where the author overwhelm can get humongous is that you try to kiss them all. You can't kiss all the girls or all the boys. Just pick one to start with. What works with you? Now, that's where I want to go back to your competition. Who Your competitors, your most successful competitors, what platforms are they on and they are the most active? Because those are the things you probably want to emulate because they've already proven that their readers, their followers, their fans are there. And you want to be there too. So when you follow them, maybe they'll follow you back. So social media, pick which ones. It won't be everything. And if you've got a business book, you need to be on LinkedIn. If you've got a business book, you need to be on Twitter. I'm just going to say that offhand. If you've got a relationship book, you're probably going to hang out and be over on Facebook. You probably won't be on LinkedIn. All right, so there's things that you need to do. So social media, don't don't leave home without it. It's going to be the town hall for your marketing. Your profiles on all your social media, including your website, are critical. And this year, part of your success plan is really to get in with literally that microscope and look them over. You're going to bump up your expertise. You're going to modify. And each one is going to have only so many words or characters you can use. So you're going to have to tweak a little bit. But you want to have a similarity So I think it's great that if you love dogs, but, you know, if it has nothing to do with what your expertise is and you're trying to tie it in with author success, um, that maybe you don't put your dog lover in your profile. You could write about that. Now, on your website, you can get a little bit more, you know, into some of the things you do. But your profiles is like if you look at my profiles, it will show that Judith Browse is a book publishing expert and known as the book shepherd. So key words of who I am and what I'm about. And then your game plan model really needs to have some time frames of how you're going to work these things through of where you're going in. A couple of other things I want to say here is that it's important for you to have kind of like a shout out list. What people are going to be supporters of you, encouragers of you, that when you have something new or improved, um, that they will share it with their communities, start writing down their names and their contacts and make sure that you continue and have an ongoing relationship with them. And then for your own website, I want to encourage all of you to get on your homepage pronto an opt in feature. Now, if you go to mind, the bookshepherd.com, you will see right on the front, number one, it says the book shepherd with my name, Judith Bryles. And it says creating my tagline. Why would you like to create a tagline? Creating practical publishing guidance and advice for authors that you have an opt-in. And the purpose of the opt-in, your website has three purposes. One, to provide credibility for you for whatever you're doing. Two, to deliver content, information that will support that credibility. And three, gathers emails. So with that opt-in piece, mine has the uh, publishing essentials. That I have the eight publishing essentials. You click on this, you're going to get a 24-page PDF. You, get, you have to give me your email, your name and email. You're going to join my list now, but um, you're going to get how to get the ISBN, your LCCN, your CIP, the catalog and publication number, uh, that you're going to get your uh, what great thing on, on acknowledgement pages, and so much more. All right, so that's just kind of the beginning of your game plan. You finally have to figure out, okay, what's my commitment of cost, my time, how much money am I going to have to spend, and, and what else could be in this figure? Being successful this year should be in this is one of my goals, and I'd like to have you write that out, get it up on a sticky note that you can see all the time to remind you, and little nudges of what you need to move and go forward. Here's to your success. I'd love to have you email me at judithatbrowse.com and let me know what you plan to do as you move forward this year. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. We'll be with you next week. 
Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, 